What is going on YouTube? It is Quick Snoopy, and today I'm doing another replay commentary. I just finished recording my uh, Kunkka replay commentary. Be sure to check that out. I think I went like 21 kills and zero deaths or something like that. Check that out. It was a really good, um, really good game. I explained some really good fundamentals. And today we're doing a Klinks replay commentary. And I'll be playing um, Klinks mid, as maybe you guys can see here. Now this is something I guess that's very, um, it's not very common. I'd say that. I'd say Klinks mid isn't very common. Not this patch. He's never really been common that I know of. He's kind of made appearances here and there, but never really anything that was uh, like game changing. So I've been practicing Klinks mid. I think it's pretty viable. It's a pretty like standard game. They have Axe. Uh, they have Razor. They have a few people who can really like counter me. So without further ado, uh, I, I go to the rune. I get the rune, I go back mid. All right. So here, the first thing I get is searing arrows. Like there's not, like unless if I was gonna steal the rune, I could have gotten skeleton rock, skeleton walk. Uh, but it just didn't seem like something that was really needed. So I got the searing arrows. Now you'll see me harass. I don't leave it on auto very much at the beginning. So I'll just harass uh, Luna with it early on. Last thing with clinks is difficult. Like I said, something I should mention. Uh, you notice I'm going Ring of Aquila or Ring of Aquila. Uh, very, very soon. As like my first item, really. Wraith Band helps a lot with last hitting. What's really great about clinks is, is uh, like mobility to move around the map. So now I get those arrows going, right? And I have strafe. I take a lot of damage though from these uh, creeps early on. And I also noticed that he did get uh, graves or whatever on Luna. So the boomerangs are like bouncing or the attacks or whatever are bouncing between so I, I kind of position myself back a little bit because it's only level one so he does get level three before me but that's all right you'll see i catch up here i gotta eat the tangos i gotta have uh sage's mask be brought to me I play aggressive here, and maybe I shouldn't have, because, like, I don't do anything. Like, he goes back, and, like, he almost dies. But it cost me a lot of mana. Ring of Aquila is going to help with that. But I only have one tango left. I could have used it here. So, we'll take a look at my... Last hits, I have seven, and the Luna has four. I also have three denies. I leave Aquila on right now. I figured Luna would probably get it too. Because Luna has Wraith Band and Blightstone, which is interesting, but. Here, I, I kind of go for uh, Gauntlet of Strength for the survivability. Maybe I could have went something better. Of course, but... Like, maybe the Ring of Region would have been nicer. But... Because I don't have any Region left. Like, that's the thing. So I have the level advantage on Luna. I think I can trade hits. And I have like skeleton walk if I need to. So that helps if I need to escape or something. 
the thing with the, with having Aquila on is, like, I push lanes, and it kind of balances out, or I was hoping it would, but it's still on Luna's side of the river, right? Because Luna has graves, so those graves are going to push. Yeah, they're still level 1, but I mean, they're going to push, and he has Observance in True Words, which I should have known. Or I do find out that he placed those later on. But. Alright, look how I like. How I work that, right? So, <clears throat> I didn't have. Um, searing arrows, like for the first few hits. But, it all worked out. I had Clockwork who was willing to help too, but... So I buy the, the belt of strength and infuse raindrops, because one, he's gonna level six probably pretty soon, right? And I'm level six. And two, the uh, belt is gonna give me strength and health, which I can use, but I think I'll buy, yeah, there we go, I bought it, uh, healing self. So that's gonna help with lane sustain. I think like one of the struggles with clinks really boils down to is sustainability in lane and uh, like last hitting. Like his basic damage is really weak, but when you use searing arrows, level one it's plus 30 damage, so. So I eat the uh, Siege Creep for the damage bonus. I use the salve, I go invis, he stuns, so I know that he has a ward there, right? That right, uses a lot of mana every time I do that. But, I mean, I'm just two levels ahead. Fairy fire was used. So I barely have any more lasted to them, which is kind of sad because I should have way more. But like eating this siege creep with my ultimate really helps out with damage. Like as you can see, like look. I should have had, like, Searing Arrows activated there, but instead, I think he was trying to use his ultimate, or he didn't have enough mana. I get him there. I take one hit from the tower, that's fine. I can go back mid. We deward the sentry. And I have my power treads on their way. Luna calls good game. I don't know why. So, mistake one. I didn't pay attention to the time. I remember this. I remember. I was gonna help top. I was gonna gank. Uh, it's 7.57. I was waiting for the curry to bring me something. I don't know why. I don't know why I was waiting. But I was. And because of that... I missed my opportunity. I didn't get the regen rune. Player disconnected. Um, disconnect. Battle resumes. Then he reconnected. Go back mid. Not for you. The raindrop really helps me if Luna tries to use his ultimate. So that might be another interesting uh, reason that I explained there on why I bought it. Right now, I'm currently leading in last hits and denies, though. Both of those. Um, really just like last hitting. And I, I bring it under my tower. And I walk back a little bit. 
because I don't want to give Luna the opportunity to deny it. I don't really want to tank it, so I just run back. Alright, so I have um, Solar Ring, which helps with my ultimate. It also helps with the HP region. Um, so I'll point out I used Soul Ring first, then I used Death Pact on the range creep. And like, just like that, I can do so much damage. Still leading in last hits and denies. I think I do a lot of damage to this middle tower. No, I don't. Okay, there I should have used Strafe and Searing Arrows. I think I do here though, after this wave. Now I have Blightstone, yeah, that helps out a lot. Luna actually TPs, back mid. What do I do? Right, so I go top. I should have used Soul Ring and Skeleton Walk. I would have gotten there sooner. I don't know what was like really going through my mind, I guess. I wanted to wait and use Death Pact again, but like 12 seconds was too long. Klings missed the hook. So here I know that there's a Monkey King and Shaman. I go on the Monkey King. Because he's the one that has level 6. He has ultimate. Shaman does not. Um, yeah, but, like, <clears throat> just looking at this and how the fight played out, I walked right into that stun, first mistake. We don't have any vision on him. Did he just to get his ultimate? Because I thought he was level 5. Alright, whatever. So, that ultimate ends up coming out. I have 400 health now. So now I have, I use Death Pact, I get 800 health. And just like that, Monkey King gets away. And something happened here, I don't remember what it was. Yeah, I think he stunned me. So I was like, whatever, I shouldn't have TP'd there to begin with. Like, I shouldn't have been in vision when I TP'd. So I go here. I get illusion. I remember this. I placed the illusions right here. Uh, for vision mostly. I was in viz. So I just walk back. Now I know like what Luna's doing. Like Luna's just standing there. Behind tower. Um Dyer's top tower is under attack. I think like I push mid here. So I know that if Luna's out of lane, I need to push this lane. So I use Death Pact. Yep. Strafe, Searing Arrows. They fortify. I don't have much mana left. I just get back. just farm jungle now. Death pack is on cooldown. I think that helps a lot in fights and it's really like underestimated. I mean it depends like what creep you use it on but yeah. So 
So I go back to pushing mid. Killing spree. Triple kill. I attack tower. Like the tower just melts so quickly. The problem is I know I don't have much mana. So I can stay, use strafe, searing arrows, and use soul ring if I needed an escape. Which I think I do. Like, I don't need to escape, but I use it anyways. So I took a tier 1 and tier 2 off of that. I got the last one on the tower, that's important. I stayed for a few seconds. I see Luna is on her way mid. Soul ring. A skeleton walk. Luna calls GG for the second time, I think. I say let us end. But of course he doesn't. Alright, so I'm in Viz, right? They don't have any detection. There's four of them, and the one I choose to go on here is the one who's furthest back. Right, I can take out the Shaman. I can like eliminate all of his disables early on. But if I go on, I might risk the chance of me like getting hit with disables too. But we'll see how that plays out. I didn't even have Searing Arrows on. I have Desolator though, but not Searing Arrows. One does 142 damage. So I get back. I give vision for my team. So my team knows that Axe is here. I'm kind of going through like all the different possibilities in my head on like how these fights can happen. Now I activate Searing Arrows. I wait till Skeleton walks off cooldown. Then I kill the Shaman. Skeleton walks off cooldown so I can Skeleton walk again. And then I kill Luna. I take the tower. As you can see, I'm working on um, Solar Crest for the evasion against the Luna, Razor, and Monkey King. And we're kind of wasting time top because we can't find him. Luna calls a good game for the third time. What is this, Luna? Zero kills, four deaths? Alright, cool. Just making sure. So... Then I go mid. Destroy the range creep because I want to push the lane. I leave Searing Arrows on. I bring up Aquila, so it's fine. I'm leading in last hits right now. Probably in net worth too. Yep. Our Luna, the Lu enemy Luna is all the way down at the bottom. Like... Barely above Shaman and Omni Knight. I get Medallion. So I see a Razor. Razor has phase boots and high movement speed. He, I barely have more movement speed than he does. And like Omni Knight's not in range for his uh, aura. And my last replay commentary. I talked about how I should always go on high ground when you're trying to kill somebody in jungle to make sure you don't know where the enemy team is. Watch it, like watch that video. Cause this is, this game happened after that Kunkka game. These were both back-to-back -back games that I had. So I'm recording back-to-back -back replay commentaries. Wow, this is still fresh in my head. Um, yeah, but I mean, I guess you can kind of like already guess what's gonna happen. I attack. The Razor. This camp stacks. Luna's here. I was gonna walk up on high ground, and then I walk back. Omni Knight keeps walking. I think he gets out. Like, there's not a lot I can do, right? Like, what am I gonna do? Fight into a Luna ultimate? 
So he uses Guardian Angel. Axe calls GG. They're not letting us in though, so I don't know why they keep calling it GG. It's kind of annoying. Uh, I farm Ancients to make sure my Omni Knight is safe, so I kind of stay by him for a few seconds. Alright. So here again, I see him. Uh, I see Axe. Luna is here. Okay, I wait for I wait I go on high ground right. So I've learned through my previous games, they go high ground if you have the opportunity to. Not only because of the mischance, but because of the vision too. So I know no one else is here. Uh, and I just kill Luna. Like the Omni Knight lives. So I use Death Pact. I mean, the Shaman dies because there's nothing he could have done. There was two of us. Now I just attack Tower. I have Desolator. He says something. The Luna says something. I don't know. He zero kills five deaths, so. He's probably pretty mad. I'd guess. So, uh, here we try to push high ground just so they defend. But look at how this plays out. I think Monkey King had Shadow Blade, or he just got it. I'm pretty sure there's a Monkey King ultimate that goes on here. There's a Razor ultimate, there's a Shaman ultimate. Maybe I'm thinking of another fight when Monkey King used his ultimate. But I mean, Monkey King could have been there. I don't know where he was. Well, let's find out. Yeah, he was top two. I take the regen rune. I go and I finish um, Solar Crest. I have the evasion now. I can use it on people. Pushing mid is important here. I go bottom. Um, I didn't mean to attack Axe. I didn't attack him again, and he blinked out. So that's probably something I should have done, just attacked him once. So he couldn't blink. But I didn't really want to get the damage from the uh, Blade Mail, so. Let's go back mid. So I know they have that warded. I kill Axe. Luna's here. Axe calls GG again. Monkey King Ultimate comes out. Guardian Angel comes out. Not really sure what Shaman is doing here. I have to ask my team for help. Because I mean, like there's only two alive and they're both here. So I kill a Shaman. And then the Monkey King is in Viz now. Oh, he gets away, I remember that. Yeah, that was pretty lame. He says to report his team. We said no, there's no reason to report the enemy team. They didn't do anything. I go on Razor here. This is important. I mean, his movement speed though, uh, is insane. So I just get back, but Monkey King was there too, right? You always have to, like, when you play against the Monkey King, I mean, it sounds like common sense, but when you play against the Monkey King, you need to know that there's a chance he could be anywhere on the map, and you don't know where he is. Like, same thing with Clinks, right? Like, that's why the other team is buying so many wards. But we keep dewarding him. Side note, when you play... Ricky, Clinks, Bounty Hunter, any hero that has invis. Essentially what you're doing is making the other team buy the other support typically, right? Uh buy sentry awards.
to help counter the Invis hero. And when supports, like, they don't have a lot of gold, right? Like, my support, my Omni Knight has 3,600 gold. Uh, enemy Shaman, 5,300. Uh, so my my support doesn't have a lot of of gold. He doesn't have a lot of net worth because he's not the one that's last hitting or not the one that's getting kills. He's typically not pushing lanes, uh, which is fine. But when you play Invis Heroes, you force the enemy support to spend gold on Sentry Wards and Observer Wards too, right? Uh, which makes, like, in return the the team have like less gold right because the the more gold that their supports are spending on wards the less gold they're spending on other items like pipe heart of tarask uh four staff blink dagger shadow blade uh it's just you're making the other team spend gold but yeah so there's that so that's something I kind of knew going into this game. Was that if they bought wards, they're going to be behind in net worth. Which I mean they are. Because like we're dewarding this now, right? So I go top. Look, right here there's more wards. We dewarded that. Razor's top. The top tower is almost gone. I think this is where the Monkey King ultimate happens. That I was talking about earlier. So that happened. I mean, Clockwork, Hook, Luna. Monkey King Ultimate. My health, it drops to 200. I get Oblivion Staff. So I'm working on Orchid, right? <clears throat> uh, partially for the Luna, the Monkey King. Axe won't be able to use Berserker's Call. All that good stuff. Do want to point out, though. I got the 5 armor over the magic resistance. This is something I was debating about during the game. Uh, so they have a Luna. They have Razor. They have Shaman. It's about like the extent of their magic damage, right? The Luna is going to do a lot of physical damage. Uh, with the right click. I have Solar Crest. And the Monkey King too is going to do a lot of physical damage. So the Solar Crest, like my armor right now is, what is that, 30, right? Yeah, I have 30 armor right now. 10 of that comes from Solar Crest, and I have 20% evasion. So if the other team, if the other Luna does hit me, aside from me out-leveling him, I'm level 19, he's level 15, I have better stats than he does, I have more armor than he does, and I have evasion. Like, if the Luna does hit me, it's not going to be a lot of damage because of all the, the armor I have. Same thing with Monkey King. So the, the magic resist would have been nice if they had, like, an Invoker on the other team or Storm Spirit. But for this, like, I'm... I, I think going armor was the right choice. Searing Arrow's damage or evasion. Uh, I mean, I already got Solar Crest. So getting the Searing Arrows really helps out a lot when it comes to pushing. Because, like, I have Desolator, right? And I have Strafe. I have Searing Arrows. Like, all of these, like, Clinks is really good at pushing lanes and, like, escaping and getting in and out of fights. So I figured that I didn't really need more evasion because I would stack, right? Diminishingly. But it was just... Searing Arrows was the right one here. Um... I can tell you right now that I went for the health regen instead of the attack damage for 20. Um, I mean, look at my health right now. And the attack range, you don't really need because I can just walk up next to their entire team. So, Razor here gets away. Timber didn't do a whole lot. I go for the double damage run. Okay. So I have 500 health, right? Death Pact is about to end. I go on high ground. The Axe can't do anything when I'm on high ground. The Razor can't do anything when I'm on high ground. I just destroy the Razor. Axe tries running at me. I had 200 health. 
and I just get back. I go back top to defend the tower. I also buy Robo the Magi here. I think that's important because it finishes uh, Oblivion stuff. So now I have two Oblivion staffs that give like a lot of a lot of damage, a lot of attack speed, and the mana region, which lets me just auto attack with Searing Arrows. Killing spree. All right, here, I walk on high ground. Again, the same place, they've had awards in the same spot, like the entire game. I should have known better. I could have stayed and fought, but I'm out leveled all of them, right? But they have disables and the razor could just steal damage from me. And I think that's a problem. Um. They didn't like use disables on me in time. So I get away and like it pulls two of them out of the team fight. Like they're not in the team fight anymore. Cause they were busy chasing after me. But on the other hand, my team also could really use me right now. Because of that, like the cogs really blocked him from chasing after a clockwork. I don't remember if he escapes or not. I think it looks like he does. Yeah, he doesn't. Feels bad, man. So... I push bottom. I want to finish Orchid. I'm not far. Farming patterns. I eat the creep. The bonus damage helps out a lot. And I'm already like out leveling them, right? So you want to get like the most out of your abilities and out of the timings because there's a delay between Death Pact when it's on cooldown and when it can be used. This game's actually really close. Uh, the Lena passes me up in net worth. So this is interesting, right? The Luna has more last hits than me uh, at 31 minutes. But, like, the Luna has Glaives, right? And I've stopped farming for the most part. Like, I'll go in and out of jungle. But, look, there's more wards here again. I think it's the same ones from before. All right, so here, Shaman, Axe, I know they're both here. I see Serpent Wards come out, Razor's there. Sorry, Omni Knight, like, when I went into that fight, or like when we went high ground there, the D Ward, I told the Omni Knight I would go with him because I didn't want him going alone because I didn't want him dying because I knew they had wards there and if they saw him alone, they would go after him. And that's what happened, but I told him I would go and that I would stay invis and maybe get a kill if there was one there. And uh, turns out it didn't work out. So here I should have walked in front of him. I should have had dust. I didn't. I didn't use death pact either. I hid in the trees making sure that Axe couldn't blink and call. That would be very bad. I'm going in jungle. I wanna finish. Uh, Bloodthorn, but like I'm quite a bit away from that. I still have net more net worth than Luna, right? Because the Luna, just a cold fog left behind. Luna has zero kills and seven deaths. Um. One thing with clinks, you'll notice a lot of your farms come from kills. Like once you have a skeleton walk and you start getting items, you'll notice yourself like roaming around the map more. 
I won't stay in one place for too long. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Um. All right. Important note: instead of attacking the shaman, I go on the tower because the tower is worth it more because you get gold from the tower. It allows your creeps to push and you'd get more vision. And it just gives us more map control. I know that Axe is there, right? Axe could just blink and call. And like, look at where me and Lena are standing. I think he might catch both of us, I don't know. Um, Monkey King, however, I don't remember if I use an Orchid on him. I mean, looking back at it now, I should be using Orchid on Monkey King right now and just killing him. He does have Shadow Blade though, and that's the, the thing. I wasn't close enough for Guardian Angel. I take tower, I do use Orchid on him, but we don't have any detection. I think that's how that goes. Axe is here, he blinks, calls. Luckily, Lena uses Yule Scepter. I commend to Lena. The stun gets two of them, and I get out. Unfortunately, the Omni Knight dies, but... It happens. Axe uses uh, Berserker's Call again. I get back because Razor's ultimate. Luna has ultimate too. All right, I wanna go over this fight. And a half second speed. Razor has ultimate. I know Luna has ultimate. Axe already used Berserker's Call. What I think is crazy is the hook that comes from clockwork here because our timber died he hooks shaman i attack the shaman from outside clockwork tries to escape the cogs push axe back i use orchid this stuns him and then we end up killing axe right and My bad. Alright. I forgot I had on free camera. I ended up going high ground. I didn't know Monkey Kicking was there. He placed an Observe Reward. I see Monkey King after I go Invis. He uses Dust. Like, there's a Sentry Ward here. There's a Luna who has S and Y. Hmm. There's a Monkey King with Desolator. Like, I need to, I need to get out, right? But the Clockwork jumps in. The Luna chases after me for a bit. Like, I couldn't have really done anything in that fight, to be honest. And I was slowed by S and Y, so. I put Crystallis in my inventory over Soul Ring. It just helps with farming. And I wanted to get Bloodthorn soon. I'll go back to player perspective. You can see my camera. Camera movements. Alright, so Bloodthorn gets brought to me in my inventory or in my stash. Uh, I don't even know what you call this thing anymore. Hmm. In my quick buy, that's the word I was looking for. Um, I wanted to buy Scythe Advice. Reason being is for Axe, Luna, Razor. After talking it over with my team, uh, we have decided that maybe I should go for uh, something else instead of Scythe Advice. Because my Lena couldn't get that, right? So... Uh, I'm not doing, I'm not at the top anymore when it comes to last hits and denies. Monkey King and Lena are battling it out. When it comes to gold per minute, uh, Lena's at the top. Net worth, me and Lena, or me, Lena, and Monkey King are really battling it out here.
So, um... Pushing mid right now. While we have an advantage. And, like, I have Bloodthorn, right? I gotta be careful when I use it on Axe because of Blade Mail. And I know that. But the other team has, like, less than 1k net worth lead on us. So there's a comeback happening here. So the axe jumps in, he blinks in, uses the Berserker call, and we just get back because uh, we're on their side of the map. They probably have vision. I start farming the Ancients. Now I really want to focus on like Hurricane Pike because I didn't get that attack speed or attack range talent. Um, I can just make up for that with Hurricane Pike and like the survivability from it, being able to push myself away from fights and uh, like the stats that it provides are just really good. So. I go farm the jungle a little bit more. So right here, I remember I'm telling him that I want Roche warded because I wanted to to get Aegis or have Arlena get Aegis. And this way, this plays out is really interesting. So he places the ward there on accident. Uh, I end up continuing the farm. My team goes in the Roche. They're kind of standing outside of Roche. They end up scanning. Interesting. I'm waiting for what is this Dragonlance? Dragonlance is brought to me. All right. Let's uh, look at the positioning here. Lena's inside. Roche is like. Halfway killed. Monkey King is Invis. We have Shiva's guard on Lena. Um, Axe is there. He's probably just gonna blink a call. Monkey King uses ultimate. So this is really dangerous, right? I'm not sure what Axe is doing outside. Luna's ultimate comes out. I see the hook on Luna. Notice where I am, right? So, I'm at like the high ground. This fight goes down. I'm attacking Luna. Luna isn't going anywhere. I switch over to Shaman. Like what is that? Five hits and he's dead? Uh, so what happens is Axe blinks in. They end up killing Roche. Arlena gets the Aegis. I use Bloodthorn on Axe. He uses Blade Mail. The Cogs push him back. I'm fighting into Monkey King's ultimate, wherever he is. Oh, he's right here, right? Lena should be stunning. Lena should be stunning. All right, whatever. And uh, I think Lena dies. No, okay, yeah, Axe comes in. I don't have Bloodthorn because it's on cooldown. But Axe has heart, right? And I'm taking like damage from this is so weird because I'm taking damage from a shaman Axe is gonna regen health with heart like a large amount of health I continue to chase because I wanted to get the kill instead of pushing lanes I chase Axe this is completely my fault I position myself over here so that he can't really escape he ends up having to run run this way he goes down to 200 health, 60 health, right? I don't have Skeleton Walk yet. Heart of Tarrasque is on cooldown, he's about to blink. 
He blinks over there. I end up chasing him by this point. He has like 3,000 health again. 3,500 health. I use uh, Bloodthorn on him. He thinks he calls. Maybe, maybe not. Yep. So there is the call. I just go invis because it's not really worth it, right? Because I almost killed him like so many times. I just get back. I don't know what Axe does. He just hides here. And plus, like, they're all respawning and Shaman's on his way. So. That was completely my fault. But. I farm Ancients. I paused because our teammate, our Omni Knight, was having like technical difficulties. So he disconnected. We paused again. Waited like, literally, he was back in like a minute. He just had to restart his client. Alright, so Omni Knight reconnected. They unpaused. Farming uh, the camps again. So here I have to pay attention to Axe. I really want to kill him again. I think we do. Yep. So that puts me on top for the net worth lead. We're getting a lot of farm. Okay, so I actually want to point out, I got this Searing Arrows multi-shot because I wanted to push lanes. The strafe duration, um, I don't know. Like, they're both really good. I think the Searing Arrows multi-shot's nice because of, like, the team fights that have been happening. It stops Axe from blink calling. Uh, yeah, and plus I'm just doing a lot of damage right now, so. So Monkey King is behind me. I use uh, Bloodthorn. Look at how much damage we're doing to him. And at the same time, it's attacking the, uh, the barracks too. So half, half second speed. Um, Luna ends up killing Omni Knight, and like at this point, like it's still so close. Like it's a one thousand gold net worth lead that we have. And then our timber dies. Like there's not much I could have done because Shaman and Razor are there. I get back. Go farm jungle. I want to finish Hurricane Pike. I push top. I finish Hurricane Pike. Um, and I just go back mid right now. Next, I wanted to work on AC. So, attack speed is going to help me out. A lot. Especially with the multi-shot, right? The armor is going to help me out a lot. Again, for the same reason, like, my armor right now is 29. And I still have the evasion. So, like, they're not dealing any damage when they actually, like, right-click me. Um, and I would grant me 25 attack speed and 5 armor to nearby allied units and structures. And it decreases the enemy unit and structure armor by 5. So, it just helps with, like, lane push. And I think Lena was getting scythe of the vice. So. Um, I don't want to play too aggressive. Although now I know that Axe is top, so. We just go top, we can't find Axe, we go back mid.
So finishing AC is like really important just for like pushing high ground and stuff. So I couldn't decide what I wanted to get here. If I wanted to get a uh, Hyperstone or the Plate Mail. I got the Plate Mail. We push top. Axe is here, so luckily he can't blink, right? I can use Bloodthorn on him. Monkey King is there. I wasn't in range for Guardian Angel. I get back because I wanted to use Death Pact. I use Death Pact. Everyone dies by then. Luna Ultimate came out. And Clockwork bought back. I don't know about the buyback on a Clockwork. Um, then me and Lena lived, so. Um, the Luna's picking up on net worth, which isn't surprising. Because I think he went Manta too, alright? Yeah, Manta and SNY. I don't know about that on Luna. Alright, so right here I see Razor, but I don't know if anyone else is here. But sure enough, there is a Monkey King. Because, like, he can always be in the tree. Or he has Shadow Blade, so he could be Invis either. I just always have to assume and expect that Monkey King is there. I uh, used Death Pact again. So Roche is up. We want a Roche again, but we want Ward that side of it too. I'll speed this up. Alright, so we gotta push out mid, right? So that's what I end up doing with the multi shot that helps out a lot. There's an Omni-Knight Illusion in here, so it looks like we're outside, like mid. They don't know we're in Roche. And I ended up uh, standing outside of Roche for most of it. And then I wanted Aegis, so I take Aegis. Give Cheese to Lina. I think this is like, we lose another fight here, I think is what happened. Because of the Monkey King ultimate. Dyer's metal barracks have or maybe we just go top. Dyer's no yeah, I Axe lands Berserker call. I tried to push him away, but that didn't work. I'm using the multi-shot. I go invis and I get back. I end up taking Shrine. Radiance top tower is under attack. Just for now I have enough for AC. Just as much help as they pause and I don't know why. Okay, so now with AC, Aegis, uh, Solar Crest, a Bloodthorn, like we're doing pretty good. Like, well, I'm still at, like, top for net worth. We, like, fight for that position, pretty much. The Monkey King has Battle Fury, I think. So, yeah. Everyone has, like, really good farming abilities and items. Like, Luna and Monkey King. Except for me. I mean, the multi-shot helps with that a little bit, I guess. Um, so 
So Axe is here. The stun landed. He dies. And I just wanted to work on Moon Shard next, I think was my next item. Cause I'm like six slot at this point. Lena has sight of the device. So, I mean, like, right now, they actually have a 10k, 11k gold net worth lead. The Shaman just walks up to us. Um, I have to be careful for a call. So, my positioning is kind of bad here. But, I mean, like, he was dead, so he just bought back, so that's alright. But I mean, it's still like a good habit to like position yourself better. I have Aegis here. I use Bloodthorn. Then I just get out. He pauses again. I don't know why. Axe is standing there. I didn't attack him directly because I don't want like his passive to do anything. And I mean, just like that, uh, I mean, you see uh, a huge like gold net worth change. The Monkey King did a lot of damage. I mean, his ultimate was there. But I mean, other than that, like, I don't know. Okay, I guess that's fine. I didn't know that Monkey King had Bloodthorn. Yeah, he has Bloodthorn apparently. He has MKB too, which I didn't know until now because the game's so late, right? And I think it only end right after this. So I never had a chance to check. I didn't know he had Silver Edge, MKB, which destroys a lot. Like, it, it'll destroy like my armor. And uh, I mean, he has Desolator, so like. The only person that can really like fight me on the other team, I think, is Monkey King. Now that I look back at it. Um. All right. Whatever. So here we just take tower. I never got a chance to finish finish Moon Shard. Aegis expired. And uh, yeah. So, looking back at this now, um, Lena had a divine. I don't remember that. I don't know if that was at the end or not. I did the most damage, most, ooh, I did like the most building damage by far. Like almost 13,000. Like nobody really ever came close to that. Um, net worth is pretty good. Like you can see where I mentioned they had like 11k gold net worth lead and then we come up on top with like a 1k. <clears throat> like half of this game they actually had a net worth lead on us. I don't know what happened like I guess they just farmed more. They have like heroes that farm better. But I lead on top with the net worth. So I mean compared to their whole team yeah, I don't know, it, it was a good game, it wasn't bad. Did I hit 25 first? Okay. So, yeah, that was a uh, replay commentary of Clink's middle. 298 last hits. Uh, Monkey King had a lot of last hits. Shaman had Refresher Orb, Luna had BKB, and Aghanim Scepter. It was a good game. Axe had Shadow Blade and Blink. I don't know about that. Um, I mean, it was 11 and 11 with it, but Crimson Guard, Heart, I know we had those. So hopefully this video helped you out and gave you some insight to... Uh, 
to how I've been playing recently, some of the heroes I've been playing, and why I've been uh, doing some of the things I do. So hopefully this video helped you out. If you have any questions, let me know. I will answer them in the comments below. Be sure to leave a like on this video. Share it with some friends who are maybe new to Dota or trying to, maybe like looking to understand heroes. Uh, Cause that's all, all what this is about is helping people become better at Dota. I wanna help, uh, help you guys in Dota. So I always make a lot of Dota guides and such. So please be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in my next video. Peace. Is it easy to show with the weight of the world on my shoulders? I know I told you. It's the best slot I know. It's not a game that I am playing. My love, trying to hold my feelings.